So in this video, I'm going to show you how to check, how to fully check your car's electrical system. Maybe you have a battery light on, or you just want to see if it's in good health. Um, but let's get started. So I think it goes without saying that you need to pop the hood. So the first and pretty much the minimal thing you at least have to do is check the battery voltage just with a regular multimeter. So we'll set it to 20 volt scale <clears throat> DC and check the battery voltage. Make sure you scratch through any corrosion. Try to get a good connection. So scratch through like that. When I do this, I get 12.53 volts, which is a good range. You want it, you want like 12. Point, at least 12.4 volts. If it's below 12.4, then um, that's signs that there might be a small problem. So like I said, it's not enough to just check voltage. You need to check uh, if the battery is capable of performing under a load. And that's when you get one of these. This is a battery load tester. Now I don't remember how much this was because I got it a while ago, but I know that it wasn't that expensive. And these, can, you can get real fancy load testers that are very expensive, but this one works just fine. So basically just hook it up and make sure you get a good bite, like rock it around so it goes through the corrosion. And, I mean it tells you right now the battery voltage. You can see it, let me make sure that's in the shot, yeah. You can see it right here, it's about... 12, it's pretty much exactly what we just read with the multimeter. So what you do, and do not do this while the car is running, you do it while it's off. There's a little switch at the bottom. What that does is when you switch it, it puts an electrical load on the battery. And <clears throat> um, what you do is you look at your CCA of the battery, you call it cranking amps. And in this case, it's 625. So then, uh, actually, this is, 625 isn't even on here. Uh, you match that with the, what's on the uh, scale right here, and if it drops into the weak region or the bad region when you put the load on it, then your battery is bad. So when we put the load on it, you can see that it's still in the green section, which means that the battery is good. So this is essential for testing batteries because it's not enough to just test the voltage. So that's pretty much it for testing just the battery. Uh, now we're going to test the alternator. So what we need to do is we need to start the car and check the voltage while the car is running. Now. I think the specs, I don't remember offhand, but the specs for the battery while the car is running should be, it should be at least 14 volts. And if it's below 14 volts, then you know you have an issue with charging because the alternator charges the battery. And if it's above, I think it's uh, 15, 15 volts, then you know that the alternator is overcharging the battery which can be just as much of a problem if it's undercharging. So you want it to be between the 14 and 15 volt range while the car is running and idling. So let's, uh, let's turn it on. So as you can see, we got 14.37 volts, which is actually perfect. So this alternator is charging. But even that's not enough. Okay, what we need to do now, uh, we just tested the alternator when it's not under load. We need to load test the alternator and make sure that it can still put out the required amount of voltage even when there's a heavy electrical load on it. So, we're going to do the same thing except now 
should have just left it on. Now what we're going to do is turn on, this is sort of a quick and dirty way, but it works. Turn on everything electrical that you can think of. So we'll turn the, oh geez, okay. We'll turn the uh, windshield wipers on, lights, turn the brights on, uh, radio, uh, uh, wind, back windshield defroster, that's a big one, turn that one on, actually it's, the, it's this one, windshield defroster, big uh, current drawer, uh, air conditioning, oh blower motor on high, and that should be enough, now let's check the voltage again and see what it is, and actually, that's not a good voltage. With an, with an electrical load, it can still maintain a 14 volt. So actually, that signs that this alternator might be on its way out. See, when, when I turn all that stuff off, I go back to 14 volts. So next what you want to do is you need to make sure that the connections from the battery to the alternator or actually in good shape because if, if you have a voltage problem with your battery it could very well be the connections and not the alternator or the battery so you need to make sure that they're in check so what we're going to do is we're going to do first a voltage drop test from battery negative to the chassis of the alternator because the alternator is grounded through its chassis and a voltage drop test tests for resistance in the connection between the two devices. The circuit has to be live for the test to be valid. So, one of the times, the biggest draw of amperage is when the motor is starting. So, we don't want the engine to start, but we want to just crank it over. So we need to pull the fuel pump relay to make sure it doesn't start, and then take our voltage drop test during that time. So here's my setup. <clears throat> I got one lead on battery negative. Uh, the other lead attached to a wire which goes down and touches the alternator chassis. So this will test the ground side. And they both go up to the multimeter which is hanging in front of the windshield. So that we can see it when we're in the car. So we need to pull the fuel pump fuse now. Uh, it's not located underneath the hood, so that means it's located um, in the car. So find the fuse fuses. And in this case, they're down here. So just turn both of these. Comes loose. And fuses are up in there. So, you got a little diagram here. Come on, there it goes. Fuel pump. So take this fuse, pull it out, and the car won't start. That's what we want. Alright, let's see. I don't know if that's showing up. Alright, there it is. Now we want to do this because we want maximum current going through the circuit because this is a high amperage circuit and it will not work while the car is running. You have to do it while it's under heavy load. Alright, so let's crank her over and watch the multimeter and see what kind of voltage drop we're getting. Um, we're looking for anything, if it's above 0.2 volts, then it's excessive voltage drop, which means that the circuit has too much resistance in it. If that's the case, then we need to, we need to track the circuit from battery negative to where the alternator is grounded and find the resistance, that excessive resistance. It could be a body, you know, it could be any type of ground wire that's you know, corroded, we, that's what we would look for.
So let's see what we get. Actually, that's a lot. It's 0.18. That could be the reason why my alternator isn't performing under load. Let's do that again. 0.18. That's a lot. So I'm actually gonna look for to see what I can find. Well, when I replaced the alternator last time in this car, I replaced the negative battery cable because it was really bad. Um, now, I don't know what else... I don't have a wiring diagram or anything in front of me, but I don't know what else the alternator is grounded to. I know it's attached to the engine. Um, so, this is one way the battery gets to the engine. Now, there's another ground, and the engine, the body ground right here, and this is in pretty bad shape. Um, might be naive of me to say that this is my culprit, I'm not sure, but regardless, I need to change this because this is really corroded, as you can see, this is pretty bad. So, can't do it now, but when I get the chance, I'm going to change this out and see if it uh, fixes my charging problem. But, uh, now that we've done the negative side, let's voltage drop test the positive side. All right, so let's look at the setup I have now. A wire going from positive battery to one lead on the multimeter. The other lead is going down to uh, what they call the hot wire on the uh, alternator. And they call it that because it is hot, meaning that if you touch it, you will get shocked. This nut right here. So be very careful because that is hot at all times. So just I peeled off the boot carefully. It's covered with a boot. That's how you know. It's covered with a boot for a reason because they don't want you to touch it. <laughs> um, so we're gonna we're gonna put our multimeter lead on there and and hopefully that stays while it's cranking over. I'll I'll check it after we're done. So I'll wedge it in there. So let's do the same thing. Let's... Can you see that? Alright. Switch hands here. Voltage drop positive side. Alright, we got pretty much nothing on the positive side. So we know that the problem is on the negative side, at least my problem. Um, and that's what you would this is the whole diagnosis pro uh, procedure. So, in my case, I know the problem is solely on the negative side. So, and I think it's that engine, the body ground, because that's in pretty bad shape. So let's talk about the battery light on your dash. Uh, the battery light, it, it means more of a bad alternator than a bad battery. Basically what's happening is the alternator charges the battery on the alternator. There's a voltage regulator and <clears throat> The voltage regulator it not only keeps the alternator from overcharging the battery and undercharging it But it also monitors the battery voltage and sends a signal to the car's computer and if that battery voltage is outside of specifications meaning too low or too high, the voltage regulator in the alternator will send the signal and turn on the light on the dash. So it's it's not necessarily the battery that is turning on the light. It's because of the battery. What's turning on the light is the voltage regulator. So the last thing to check is uh, the connections on the voltage regulator on the alternator. Now the, now the voltage regulator on most alternators is inside and unfortunately if one goes you have to replace the whole unit and um, that's just the way it is. So that's the last thing we need to check is just the connections to the voltage regulator. So the voltage regulator connection is I don't know if I can hold the camera and uh, do this at the same time. Right here. 
trying to get a shot in. This plug goes right here onto the alternator. Might not be coming in so great, but basically <clears throat> just unplug it and uh, look at the terminal connections and see if there's any excessive resistance. Alright, let's see what we got here. And uh, it doesn't look bad. Uh, if you can, check also on the alternator's actual terminal itself to see if it's corroded. And uh, if you really want it to go crazy, um, you can even look up a wiring diagram and check all the individual wires on this back to the PCM. That's a little excessive for me because um, that would be a huge pain in the ass. But it's it's something that can happen. And I mean, it's not likely, but it is. it could be possible that a, a faulty connection from the voltage regulator to the computer is what's setting your light on. So, but you need to be careful though. Um, so I'm not going to do that today because I know I'm just going to I know that this is fine so let's put this back on there it is in the past and actually it was on this car what's happened was everything checked out voltage drops uh, battery load test alternator load test everything checked out uh, and what was happening is my battery light was still flickering on sometimes and it actually turned out to be the voltage regulator it happened inter intermittently meaning it was fine most of the time but sometimes uh, it went bad and it would cause the light to go on so um, that's something you gotta be aware of. what I had to do in that case was connect run wires from positive and negative and watch uh, the voltage on the battery constantly as I was driving the car and I could see that when the voltage dropped below a certain acceptable level the battery light turned on then I knew it was the voltage regulator and I had to replace the alternator and it fixed it so sometimes it can be tricky so but this is pretty much what you need to do to check your car's electrical system and uh, that is it Thanks for watching.